Hi everyone, welcome back to Cyber Science and to the second talk of the day for this track. Um, our second speaker is uh, Sumitra Bishval, cybersecurity specialist at Bosch. Her, her paper is titled Real Time Intelligent Leasing Prediction and Awareness Model. So, uh, welcome, Sumitra, and uh, I'll hand it over to you. You should be able to share your screen and to start your presentation. I'll be in the background if you need anything. Thank you so much. All right, then. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me over here. And uh, this is uh, a research idea that I've come up with, uh, and it is real-time intelligent fishing prediction and awareness model, also known as RIPPAM. So today I will be presenting about it. And before I start uh, getting deeper into RIPPAM, I will give a brief overview about what wishing is and how is it different from phishing. Usually people have a notion that wishing and phishing are similar, but in this discussion, I'll be able to tell you what is the difference basically. And uh, if there has been any research advancements made in this field of phishing, then I'll move on to RIFPAM and what are its uh, possibilities and if it is feasible or not, and the preliminary experimentation that has been performed to analyze RIFPAM. And then I'll conclude the presentation with the future work. So let's get started with what is wishing. So, Wishing is basically a voice-based phishing, but then it is more than just phishing because it is human hacking through phone calls. Now, phone calls are very um, dynamic and complex in nature and like phishing. So uh, there are more chances of uh, people or attackers tricking the targets. And uh, wishing is not something very new, but it has been existing over uh, since a long time. But uh, interestingly, since 2020, over the pandemic stage, wishing has become very frequent. As you can see, there are certain instances where engineers falling prey to OTB scams and uh, phone scammers laundering money. And even in the like social media, there are so many instances. And then there is a survey that says that 40% of the consumers have lost their money through phone scams. So basically, phishing is, uh, phishing is just another phishing act, but it is more tricky and more advanced and more dynamic in sniffing the sensitive information from the targets. So that is how phishing is different from phishing, and it is more tactical. It is a more continuous verbal interaction and uh, dynamic in nature. So here uh, I have a small example of uh, wishing where you can see there is this attacker who is posing himself as someone very friendly and is here to help Bob, who is the target, uh, in um, helping him to prevent any kind of a fraudulent attack on the credit card. So as the um, conversation goes on in a very friendly manner, Bob is tricked into revealing his OTP. Uh, the scenario can be as such like, um, let's say the attacker is having access to the login uh, page of Bob Bank's login page, and uh, he has the username and the last resort of accessing the uh, login uh, uh, screen or the login account of uh, Bob is through OTP, but then OTP has to come through an SMS or email. So uh, now this attacker has an idea of uh, the phone number or the email of Bob and he calls up and uh, poses himself as an attacker, uh, uh, poses himself as a, a very friendly manner like, hey, I'm there to help you with your fraudulent uh, attacks or attempts that have, have happened on your credit card and I'm here to help you sort out. So if you can just give me an OTP, I'll be able to do that. So Bob feels very reassured and shares the OTP. And there it is. Now with that OTP, the attacker can log into Bob's banking account. So uh, here, as you can see, it's a very ongoing continuous interaction 
in a voice. In phishing, what we have is a static message or an email, and we have some time, maybe some window or opportunity that we can think over, like, okay, this email that we are seeing is uh, basically maybe a phishing one. And we can also sort of for help from our, uh, maybe colleagues or anyone around us and uh, determine whether this email needs to be taken action for. But in case of wishing, it is different. It is an ongoing communication. You might not be uh, having that window to think about, and you may inadvertently share the information. So you can imagine how wishing is more tricky and more scheming than phishing. Now, we understand that wishing is predominant, it is frequent, and it can have more disastrous impact. But uh, has any step been taken yet for wishing? Yes, there has been research made on wishing. There have been theoretical analysis, um, such as there has been some modus operandi and psychological studies of uh, wishing attackers. And uh, uh, let's say there has been some information about how wishing uh, attackers usually persuade people, how they insist on the targets to reveal the information. But uh, despite that, the experimentations on wishing have been limited. And that is more attributable to the limited data set for uh, wishing. Basically, the voice data set is limited. And these psychological attributes are again limited. So the experimentations have only been uh, restricted to identifying whether a call is a fraudulent call or not, but they have not been able to diagnose it further. And uh, currently to avert situations like of phishing or voice frauding calls, uh, we have SMS alerts. We often get from our banks that you should not be sharing your credentials uh, because the genuine banker does not actually have to receive any information or seek such information from you. But uh, these all again start piling up on our inboxes and uh, we don't really pay much heed to it. So uh, th there is a lack of some kind of a real-time guidance, maybe something like someone could aware you, make you aware of uh, the issues, someone who can prompt you that particular action or particular conversation that is going on is malicious or uh, it is like a scheming towards something like sniffing your information. There is no such uh, experimentation done yet. So RIFPAM uh, makes an attempt to address this challenge. So here we have RIFPAM. Um, so what RIFPAM is actually is uh, it's some kind of, let's say we can assume as a background service and it is, um, uh, Bob can uh, turn it on as per his preference. It is an optional. So uh, we can take this uh, previous example of uh, Bob and the fraudulent attacker. And let's say Bob has now realized that, okay, he has been already tricked and now he does not, or he cannot afford to be tricked. So he installs RIFAM in his uh, mobile or uh, phone or any handset, anything. And uh, the RIFAM is listening in the background, the conversation that is ongoing between Bob and the attacker who's posing himself as a friendly uh, credit card fraudulent attacks uh, preventer. And uh, so there is a point where uh, RIFAM understands that the conversation is leading in a very malicious way and when the fraudulent attacker, uh, this uh, attacker uh, seeks information in a very kind, polite, and persuasive way, uh, the OTP number. So uh, RIFPAM prompts Bob that he should not share such an information because this is not genuine or uh, sharing such information is not ethical. And Bob takes this call. He can share, he may not share, that is a different thing, but that is someone who's guiding Bob uh, step by step regarding this. So Bob's uh, conscience is regained and he may be taken action by ending the call and calling the bank directly to check if such kind of facility is available with them. So here, as we understand that RIFPAM is more of a, like a guide to the target, 
who can uh, which can help the target with alerts uh, and uh, call specific information. Now coming to the technicality of RIPMAP. So basically it will have a classifier with major uh, three functions, that is pattern identification and contextual uh, sentiment analysis using natural language processing and prediction training. So the first module that is pattern identification, the first step wherein the malicious words that have been extracted from the conversation will be analyzed and uh, feature engineering will be done, feature extraction will be done, pattern recognition will be done, and they will be categorized into maybe different kinds of spams. So spams like let's say financial spam, location tracking spam, and even uh, there are so many human hackings going on in organizations to know if a, uh, if an employee is revealing some kind of information about the organization, so organization uh, sensitive information scans and so on. So there can be bins wherein these uh, voice calls or uh, they can be categorized. And uh, actually words alone cannot uh, give more idea about the nature of the call. So it can be just like anyone can say just the word OTP, but that doesn't mean that the call is malicious. So contextual analysis of the entire conversation is possible for the sequence of words and the alignment with each other. So this is performed in the second step. And with this information, further prediction of the conversation, the nature of the conversation, where is the conversation progressing towards, whether it's the malicious one or whether there can be any more uh, information, or malicious information related to it, can be um, predicted using this third stage. And this will use this past dialogue information. But as is uh, understood from various resources uh, that a classifier, a single classifier is not enough to uh, solve every kind of scenarios. We have uh, as such wishing a very dynamic environment there can be uh, various instances. Let's say uh, an attacker does not really ask for OTP. He might ask for, can you please share the six digit numbers on your phone? We don't know. The user with the target might feel that, okay, it's just some six digit number and maybe it's not an OTP. He might not think at that particular moment. And in such kind of strategic scenarios, maybe a combination of classifiers or maybe a better classifier can be used to assess this entire scheme or uh, conversation. And uh, in order to understand which classifier suits a better scenario or a different scenario, we have uh, uh, different researchers as well existing. And one of them is like reinforcement learning applications, which have been uh, used, reinforcement learning methods have been used to identify a suitable classifier uh, which can be used for a, a specific scenario, uh, like uh, they have been successfully used in malware detectors. So their uh, reinforcement learning has been used to classify the suitable malware detector or classifier. So uh, inspired from uh, such classification technique of reinforcement learning, and also uh, reinforcement learning's um, application in dialogue generation, it is envisaged that this RIFAM can be taken to a next level, wherein reinforcement learning can be used to optimize RIFAM and uh, increase its accuracy and make it least biased. Besides, uh, as you can see, there is a reinforcement learning based dialogue generation training database. Uh, we have, uh, as from the research, previous researchers, we have observed that there is a very limited voice call data set available to understand wishing. Uh, to experiment with fishing. So uh, it's uh, understood that there are conversational AI based applications coming up with the help of reinforcement learning and its variants like deep reinforcement learning. And using such dialogue generations uh, with various kind of topics picked up from the training database, new set of synthetic database can be uh, built to uh, train RIFPAM in a more efficient way. So that way, RIFPAM will evolve in future and uh, it will become more accurate over the time. Other than that, we have an alert messages database from which the actual message that needs to be prompted to the target can be picked. 
depending upon the type of phishing attack that has been predicted by RIFPAM. Now coming to uh, RIFPAM as a feasibility, uh, RIFPAM is basically a research idea and it's still in its nascent stage. And so a very preliminary experimentation has been made on RIFPAM with only a minuscule data set of 112 samples, which is really, really small uh, data set. And uh, despite that, these 112 samples are basically the natural samples. These are the real time uh, voice uh, phishing, uh, voice wishing calls, phone calls. These are the real phone calls, actually 112 samples that have been collected from various sources. And they have been diagnosed uh, using feature extraction techniques and three set of classifiers that is SVM, logistic regression and perceptron. And, um, and the performance has been analyzed apart from accuracy with the help of precision, recall, and F1 scope. So uh, we un uh, it is understood from the feasibility of the RIFPAM observations that it is a uh, RIFPAM is feasible because we have observed a uh, precision of 0.71, which is maximum uh, precision and a maximum recall score of one. And it has also been observed that the recall performance increases with increasing n-gram model. That is uh, when the uh, n-gram model goes on increasing like a lot of sequential words are taken into analysis, the contextual analysis is uh, enhanced. The recall score, that is the sensitivity or the accuracy of the model towards the correctness increases. But uh, accuracy level, unfortunately, is 65%, which is highly attributable to the small number of data set as well as uh, less uh, features that have been used. So uh, to conclude the presentation, um, it is a certain that RIPAM is visible given the preliminary experimentation results and Despite that, there has been uh, observations regarding the challenges, and the major challenges are a smaller data set and limited features currently taken into account. So in future, it is envisaged that uh, a larger number of data set can be accommodated, and it's already in progress. So we have uh, started uh, collecting more data set uh, relevant to wishing. And uh, it will be experimented with uh, different other classifiers and maybe an ensemble of uh, classifiers will be developed. So as to understand uh, for various different kind of scenarios, uh, which classifiers use the best and uh, reinforcement learning method can also be used as has been uh, discussed earlier. Besides that, uh, there has been a very uh, good speculation uh, regarding rib bands uh, adherence to uh, let's say data protection and retention laws. So uh, it has been um, found out that uh, GDPR call recording uh, uh, conditions are compliant with our uh, mechanism, with the mechanism that has been uh, showcased in RIFAM. So in future, we will, uh, it will be uh, taken into account so as to adhere to the data protection and retention laws. So that's it about RIFAM which is it's, uh, just a research idea and with preliminary observations only, but uh, it gives us more uh, information and I hope that it will see its light of the day. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we have a question here. As your current data set is small, 120, uh, sorry, 112 observations, is there a plan uh, to extend the data set or use a larger data set? If so, do you think the scale and accuracy of your current findings will improve? Absolutely, yes. Data set as has been the major limitation of uh, this experimentation, and uh, there has been some instances where we have uh, where it has been observed that uh, data set and accuracy uh, preliminary go hand in hand. So the first target, like as of now, we are working on is uh, uh, accumulating more data which are more wishing specific. So we are gathering from different sources and it will be done. Great, and then we have a question from Andrew. He's asking, uh, could this technology be used in uh, home, 
home IoT voice assistants like uh, Google Home and Alexa to listen and help prevent doorstep criminals too? Well, that's a very good question, Andrew. And uh, in fact, it's going to widen the application of RIFBAM. It will make it more ubiquitous, uh, as we understand, because we have so many IoT devices. Let's say I myself am from an automotive industry. So incorporating such kind of features in maybe Alexa or voice assistance and even in automotives would be really helpful. And we'll be looking forward to it. Okay. I don't see any other question there in the Q&A. So thank you very much, Mitra, for your presentation. Thanks for to all the attendees for attending this session again. And the conference will be back at 1 p.m. Uh, UK time. So we have an hour break. So see you shortly. And uh, thanks, Mitra, again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Patrick.